Hello, my name is Javier Ray Brooks, and along with my teammate Jordan Feigelman and Javier Diaz, we're here to present to you today our NASA Robot Mining Competition Project. Now, our objective of this project is to design and build a working robot that could fulfill the objectives of the competition. These objectives being, it is designed to travel to a set point uh, over a terrain of Black Point 1, also known as BP-1, which is a regular simulant designed to replicate Martian topsoil. After it arrives at this set point, it is then to recover a fixed amount of BP-1 in its reservoir, store it, and then travel to a goal location where it is then to dispense this reservoir. Now this competition has very specific criteria for which the robot would be evaluated. What we paid special attention to was the bandwidth and mass of the robot because those are highly influencing negative factors and drive our total score down. We also paid attention to a dust tolerant design as well as total autonomy of the robot. The competition grounds are, are, as you can see here, they are filled with the regular simulant we've described before, and they are at a slight grade. Now, when we were putting together this project, we looked through a historical sampling of many different kinds of, of robots that perform very similar tasks. And from these, we determined what would be best for us would be a frontal scooper combined with treads in order to complete the task of this competition. For, the, for our timeline, we stayed on track with only minimal error that we corrected as we went along. In our responsibilities, the major divisions of which were that my teammate Yarden handled the drivetrain design, my other teammate handled the scooping, and I myself was more in charge of coding control systems and autonomy. Here's a sample of alternative designs that we had for our drivetrain. We explored different options between suspension and tracking. From there, we decided to launch into different prototype designs. As we move through our designs, you can see here, we initially have a vertical suspension and then as we move along, we switch to a horizontal suspension. And further in our design of our prototype, we initially have actuators which are in control of the scooper arm. Due to reasons that will be explained further in our analysis, we move from that to a love tackle pulley system in order to move the arm up and down. and I'll be walking you through the calculations that we did for the components of our robot. Please keep in mind that all dimensions are in inches. Over here we have the dimensions of the side of the container unit, which you can see behind George. Uh, we use the, this area and the width of the container unit to calculate the maximum volume in, uh, allowed to a material to be stored inside it. Then we use the density of the BP-1 material to calculate the maximum weight that could be stored inside it and that turned out to be 48 kilograms. In this diagram here, there's a green arrow with the, where the 48 kilograms is concentrated. Over here we have two 900 Newton actuators uh, on the red arrow, which you can see on the robot. And we do summation of torques around this point, taking counterclockwise as positive. This gives us a 29.52 Newton meters, which means that our actuators are more than capable of lifting the maximum weight that the in a unit would store. Next up we have our scooper and the dimensions of it here, the side view this is the front view. Using this dimension here and this dimension here we can calculate the base area of the scooper and then using an arbitrary height of two inches we can approximate a volume of a single scoop of material. Using then again the density of the BP1 material we can calculate the, the, approximate, the approximate weight of that single scoop which is 11.85 kilograms. Now, we assume this value to be 15 kilograms to compensate for perhaps picking up more dirt than expected or uh, picking up rocks, uh, etc. Over here we have our lock-down pulley system. And here is a very simple 
free body diagram of the loft tackle pulley system and the objective of it is to have this tension T be one third of the total load F shown here. We have two of them in our robot and the reason why we changed to that is because uh, our frame which was donated to us has some geometrical limitations for actuator placements for lifting off this arm that you can see here. So this here is part of our prototype, our final prototype that we did on SOLIDWORKS and we pulled out this angle here, this angle here, which we used to calculate the lift force in the red arrow shown here. Uh, that lift force was uh, calculated to be 480.4 newtons. Using that, we were able to calculate the individual tension of the cables that run back to the motor to calculate the torque of the motor, which then we found out to be 0.64 newton meters. Using that, we were able to purchase the motor necessary for our robot pulleys that they have to be supported on a beam and we used a circular tube of uh, 2024 aluminum. On SOLIDWORKS we did a simulation using the previous dimension uh, 480 newtons and uh, we got a safety factor of 2.56 which means that uh, this beam is satisfactory for the purpose that we wanted it. So we welded it on this part of the frame shown here and as you can see in the image. This here is the top view of the prototype and then highlighted in red you can see where the, the tube is located. Here we have a suspension block uh, behind Jordan, you can see it. Uh, the purpose of it is to have a, a frame force here which will prevent these two bars from bottoming out. And so we protect the undersides of a robot. Once we calculate the spring force, we can then calculate the spring constant of the springs which, we, which, it, which you can see here and we use that to purchase our springs. Finally, we have our track gear analysis which is composed of two CIM motors. Uh, connected to a gearbox. And the gearbox has two reduction stages and, uh, and an output shaft. That output shaft is connected via chain to the drive shaft of the, of the robot. And that drive shaft has an angular velocity of 223.1 RPM. So using that then we can calculate the robot's velocity to be 0 0.76 meters per second. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Jarvan Begelman. I'll be discussing the prototype assembly and disassembly. As can be seen in this image here, this is our final prototype in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it's very similar, not identical to what we actually produced. Uh, to begin, we started with our, our frame assembly. The frame required many hours of preparation, sanding, priming, and painting, and drilling hole placement to ensure that all of our bearings were press fitted correctly. These bearings are to ensure that our shafts, as can be seen here, would spin freely and not wobble. Furthermore, we had to ensure that the frame would not warp or bend, so we included a lot of supporting structure across the frame. These hinges that can be seen in the front are for our scooper arm. To continue, our gearbox assembly was very important. It had to be dust tolerant and lightweight, so we chose a plastic housing. It's a two-stage gearbox with a single double reduction. It has its first stage assembled here, <coughs> the second stage assembled here. Finally, two CIM motors are installed and then you can add them onto the robot. It shows a hex shaft to reduce the amount of shearing because there's a lot of torque coming out of these motors and we don't want them to shear our sprockets. Furthermore, so we have a driving sprocket and an idle sprocket. These shafts are placed in different places on the robot. On the front of the robot, similar to a front wheel drive car, is our drive shaft. On the inside of the frame is our driving sprocket. And the outside, as you can see here, are our actual sprockets that attach to our tread. Our idle sprockets are not powered. They are simply there to maintain the tread tension. This is our suspension. Back up so you guys can see it. As you can see, this is it on the robot. Uh, we used an aluminum casing to reduce weight on the top of the suspension. However, due to fatigue, failure, and bending, we had to use stainless steel for the bottom arms of the suspension. We also 3D printed gears, as can be seen here, to aid in keeping our treads in line. The entire suspension block was then assembled and then inserted into the robot. The hole placement for the suspension is very important. If it was too high, we wouldn't have enough tension. If it was too low, there'd be an overload of tension which would cause failure of our treads. Here we have our scooper arm. It was assembled using two aluminum eldings and a support bracket. It was important that our scooper had two degrees of freedom. As you can see here on the robot, it's able to pitch the scooper up and down as well as move the entire arm vertically. Furthermore, our left tackle pulley system was installed on this bar that we mentioned earlier. This bar was welded in place, 
and as you saw, we had a high factor of safety for it. It was then attached with pulleys on either side. Each one of these is one lap tackle pulley system, and then a main pulley in the center to bring it down to our winch system. For our reservoir, we built the entire reservoir out of aluminum sheet metal and aluminum flat paneling. It was important that this component be light. We also installed actuators in these positions to ensure that they could be attached to the aluminum flat bars and not to the aluminum sheet metal. Otherwise, it would shear. Here we have our wiring diagram, which controls all the components of the robot. We used an Arduino Mega with a Wi-Fi shield to transmit our information. It is then pinned out to five separate motor controllers, which control the various components of the robot. We chose to use two parallel 12-volt batteries. And for safety, we installed this with the directional switch. In case anything were to happen or an emergency, we would be able to demonstrate it to you. Hit the button, it'll turn the robot off. Finally, we have a series of limit switches installed to ensure that nothing would collide into the frame of the robot. From this, we moved into the testing phases of our robot, which include initially simple testing of the controls on the treads, and then it follows that into testing on the scooper, as well as on the bucket, which will come in just a second. So you see there. And we're responding sensitively to those controls. Beyond that, we did drive testing as well as scooper and bucket testing on the robot, seeing the system work in whole. Using this information of the robot in run, we weighted ourselves based on the competition, competition rubric, and using this we determined a total score that was that was over 100 points than the sample score provided by the competition. From the testing, we also determined improvements that could be made on the design. In the code specifically, we had issues with delay that could either be improved due to hardware, could either be improved by changing the hardware while maintaining a Wi-Fi, which is a competition requirement, and, or augmenting the code in such a way that it, it responds better to using the Wi-Fi shield. To continue on the improvements, so our frame was donated to us, and as we mentioned earlier, it had geometric limitations, which prevented us from putting actuators on this component here. Although our left tackle pulley system works efficiently, actuators have, left, have less room for failure. In addition, our tread selection, Although our treads work very well, they have plenty of grip, they are not as dust tolerant as we would like them to be. They tend to collect dust in the bottom of the treads, and having a better tread selection would improve our dust tolerant design. Furthermore, the suspension, our horizontal suspension system acts very well in preventing the robot from bottoming out. However, having less points of contact from the ground would prevent snag ups in our drivetrain. Furthermore, having an angled suspension system would also provide more room for the suspension to move up and down. So this project has been the culmination of many years of engineering experience between all three of us. It's a multidisciplinary project that involves the three mechanical engineers in front of you to go into the fields of electrical engineering, computer engineering, mechatronics, and programming. Uh, we succeeded in constructing a working robot, as you saw by our video and our robot standing here, and we took all the challenges that came in front of us as a team and managed to overcome them. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Sabri Tosinogolo, Professor Ziccarelli, and the FAU Robotics Club, for without them, this robot would not have been a possible project. Thank you very much for your time. So are you planning to compete in the competition? We will not be competing in the competition. The robot will remain with the FIU Robotics Club. They have the option to compete with it next year. Next year. Unfortunately, we didn't meet the deadline for the application process because we were given the project a little late. We still wanted to do our best to build a robot that would be competition ready, and it meets all the standard guidelines for the competition. Any other any questions? Are there any rules on school using the same robot year after year, or is this certain well, modifications you got to do? What happened with us is we were just given like a big pile of parts that okay. said, you know, do something with it. Right. So we kind of just picked the robotics lab is pretty big. We have a lot of stuff in there. So we made use of a variety of the resources. And to address your question specifically, 
there's enough divergence in this robot so it is not the same exact robot that is going that would go to competition. Right. And there are rules that prevent exact same robots from competing here. But there's enough diversification in the design of this robot to address that. Weigh? Uh, it weighs 60 kilograms. It's about 120 pounds, 110 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some weight to it. Speaking of which, we need to roll it out of here. So, well, no. Any other questions? Um, oh, very cool. <laughs> Thank you very much.